know, there was a lot of news this week. And, of course, the biggest news was the Fed meeting. It's something we talked about for nearly a month, Derek, that we were anticipated in this state. And the Fed did what we thought they were going to do. Right. And they, they left interest rates unchanged. But what spooked the markets was the Fed basically suggested that rates could be higher for longer in, in 2023 and 2024. They also raised their GDP forecast and actually lowered their unemployment forecast. So the reason they're going to keep rates higher for longer is the economy is stronger than they expected. And you have this thing called the dot plots, and there's 19 votes on the committee. And of the 19, 12 thought they were going to raise rates again, perhaps even this year. That was a shocker. That was to, to some people. I mean, you and I had both said that the, the market was silly to believe the Fed was going to be cutting rates in 2023, given the persistence of inflation and the likelihood that oil prices could could surge again. And that's certainly what's occurred. Uh, some people suggest that they really aren't dot plots. They're more like dart plots because the Fed really doesn't know where interest rates are going to be a year from now, just as they didn't last year. So I would caution investors not to overreact to what they're hearing from headlines about what the Fed's going to do in terms of interest rates. Dart plots. I like that. And let's talk about inflation for a second. The housing inflation numbers are coming down but energy, as you enlightened us on, is going up. And, you know, we've seen some barrel cuts from a number of companies, and that's something we're going to have to watch. And by the way, you know, it's not just the companies, do they cut oil, but there's outside influences like perhaps a hurricane or Russia. All of these things could influence the price of oil. Inventories are at very low, almost dangerously low levels. So the possibility of some sort of shock, I saw that on Friday, uh, J.P. Morgan suggests that oil prices may go as high as 100 to $150, which certainly would support energy stocks, generally speaking, but the risks of a, of a diminished strategic petroleum reserve and geopolitical accidents and or some sort of shock, whether it's weather related or something else, certainly exists. And one of the reasons why people are cautious right now with regards to inflation. Let's switch topics. And of course, September is a seasonally weak month and the market has really kind of been in a bad mood the last couple of weeks, but it's not surprised to us. We talked about this just a few weeks ago. Right now, only 35% of the stocks in the S&P 500 are outperforming uh, the benchmark over the last 12 months. Historically, when you see that kind of narrowness, the market does tend to broaden out, which would be a positive for the fourth quarter. Uh, but the other thing that I want to keep talking about, too, is that this economy has been resilient. Uh, there are lots of doomsayers out there that say a recession is inv inevitable. They talk about the inverted yield curve. But none of that necessarily will happen. China is starting to rebound a little bit. We saw a very strong day on Friday from Chinese stocks. So again, this is a time to be cautious because right now, Treasury bonds offered a real return, and that's great for investors. Well, let's talk about that. Of course, you know, the 10 year Treasury almost at 4.5%. That's a number that gets people's attention. And so now bonds are a real alternative, and there's, you know, there's now yields out there. Right. Well, yields got abs absurdly low during, during and post pandemic. I mean, near 0% in CDs and money market funds. Now you're getting north of 5% on a Treasury bill, 5% on a money market fund, which we've taken advantage of for our clients. But historically, if you invest close to when the Fed is done hiking rates, you've been very happy over the subsequent one to two years. I'm not suggesting the Fed is going to hike rates one more time, but the end is close. And the end is close. And of course, we're going into the fourth quarter. And that is going to be a time when earnings start to come out. And we're going to start getting into good comparisons comparatively from what we've had in the past. Right. And by that, you mean last year in the first and second quarters, earnings were negative on a year over year basis. So in essence, you could say we had an earnings recession. Uh, this quarter, the estimates have started to rise for the first time uh, in 2023. And estimates in 2024 are also starting to go a little bit higher. Now, that may be associated with product Activity gains from AI. It could be because companies are managing their costs well. But generally speaking, if you're investing in companies that generate free cash flow and are able to pass along costs to consumers, you're in good shape.